welcome back to Project Wood. We're at the uh, cutting out stage for our birdhouse. In the previous video, you saw marking out of all of the pieces that we have in the kit. So today we'll cut those all out, get them assembled, get them sanded up and varnished, and that will be our full birdhouse video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and please share with your woodworking friends. Kits for the project can be bought below in the eBay store. The link is below. Or you can join on Patreon, where I'll send you a cutting list instead of you having to buy the kit from us if you prefer. Okay, so we'll start off with the first piece, which is the, the doorstep. This is um, a complete sawing exercise. The main thing being that we saw on the X side or the waist side of the lines. Uh, if you saw on the lines, you're going to end up with a smaller piece and it'll be loose in the joint. So we want to make sure that we're sawing on the waist side. So you're going to need a bench hook, uh, tenon saw and your pieces. You start off with three little drawbacks. That gets the saw started and on the way side of the line. Should be a good guide for you for the uh, rest of the piece. Sometimes it's smaller pieces of wood, it's a good idea to clamp them down with a G-clamp or a quick grip vice, something like that. Just clamp it onto your desk, it makes it a little bit easier. Again, we go on the X side of the line. straight down. So that's our two chamfers on the corners and next up we just want to get rid of our two shoulder pieces here. So we'll have straight cuts down and then straight cuts down here. We'll just tighten it out in the vise. Use the edge of the vise to make sure it's nice and straight. Cut on the right hand side of this line, the left hand side of this line. shoulder line here, X side of this line. Always remember to use as much of the uh, full end of the saw as you can and that would keep all the uh, teeth wearing out at the same rate. side of this line. Now if you listen to the sound carefully, you hear the pitch getting higher, that means you're getting to the bottom of the cut. So as that gets higher and higher, you slow down the amount of pressure and speed of the saw. And then your waist will just pop off.
And that's simply all the uh, buttons involved in the front step. Again, if you like in the uh, kit, you can use a piece of dowel as well for the birds to perch on. But this is just um, a nicer design feature and uh, allows you to get involved in much more woodwork jointing in the project. So that's piece one complete. And we'll move on then to the uh, sides of the bird box itself. Now we'll work on the two side pieces of the um, bird box itself. So there are eight pieces to remove here altogether. And we've been practicing those already because they're the exact same as how we removed the two shoulders for the uh, front doorstep piece. So it's the same process again. I'm going to saw down on the waist side of the line and the waist side here, waist side here, and remove all eight pieces. So I'll go through the cutting out of one of these and you just repeat that then for your other uh, seven uh, pieces of waste to be removed. So we'll go back in the vise again, nice and straight. And we'll saw on the waist side of that line. So a little tip here, I have the wood placed down as far down into the vise as I can because we're working with a laminate, a laminate timber so it would be prone to snapping in the middle if you put too much pressure if the wood is high up in the box. So drop it down as far as you can. So that's our first cut there. We, we will um, just take off the rest of that waste with a cut down along the shoulder. oil in that vice later on. So that's one of our shoulder waist pieces removed. So we repeat that for all of the other corners and the same on side number two. So we'll go ahead with that and we'll come back then to show you how to cut out the front piece. There's our two sides now ready. So that's three pieces complete. We'll go on to one of the most complex pieces now at uh, the front. So we have a few jobs to do here. We have one, two, three joints to remove on the bottom edge. We have to drill a hole for the actual bird to pop in and out. And we've got some large sawing to do to create the angles of the roof. So we'll start there and work our way around through these joints and finish off then with the uh, hole in the centre. So you're going to need your bench hook again. Put your piece onto the uh, bench hook. Um, as I said before, you can clamp it down if you feel you don't have the strength to actually hold it there. And we want to cut again on the X side of that line. So we have two of those to remove.
Okay, so you can see we're on the uh, edge of the line there, which is uh, good and accurate. Now, there are some offcuts here, triangular pieces. So we're not going to throw them into the uh, waste bin. We're going to use them maybe later on to put a little bit of decoration on the uh, top of the birdhouses. Or we can use them for wall mounting it. A few options with those. So just hang on to all four of those from the front and the back. So we want to keep on the right hand side here. Just to hold that down, move the bench hook right over to the edge, lock that in. Take your G clamp or speed clamps, whatever you have in that line, and we'll just clamp that onto the bench. If you like, we can use one of those triangular waste pieces just so we don't damage the wood here. So that gives a little bit of extra security on that, all the safer for sawing. damage on the scrap piece than the actual piece we're making. Hold on to that as well. So that now gives us the shape of the front of the birdhouse starting to come along now and actually looks like the final product. Now removing these three uh, joints are exactly the same process. Making vertical saw cuts on the X side of the lines and then we will chisel uh, the material on the inside out. So, just remove our bench hook again. I like to keep the handle of the vice kind of um, loose because as woodworkers you'll know if you leave that sticking out you're going to have bruises on your legs for the rest of your life. So, we just remove that um, if possible. Okay, so we're going to do our vertical saw cuts here. absolutely 100% sure to cut on the waist side of the line here. This is going to be taking in the little door step that we made. So we want that to be a nice tight joint. Just, just double check that you're on the waist side here. shoulder line. Okay. Um, if you like, you can also put an extra saw cut down the center. So that just helps um, make it a bit easier to remove the waste material in the middle. Side pieces. Again, 
the direction of the grain here on the laminate board is um, in the same direction as our bench so you have to be careful that you don't pull on that and snap it off. It's nice and gentle here. <laughs> Now we want to get a chisel to uh, remove our waste pieces here in the middle. This piece and this piece, they're going to be removed in the same direction as the grain, so they're going to pop out quite easy. The one on the end, we have an extra saw cut in it to help out, that can be a little bit more difficult. So we get a chisel as wide, a wide as chisel as we can. So there's a 25 millimeter chisel, freshly sharpened, and that will make light work of this here. So we want to chisel down about two, three millimeters on both sides. So you'll need your mallet as well. Again, just check that you're actually over the leg of the table and that will give you much more purchase on the operation. Just three taps all the way across. Same on the reverse. If you've made the previous project, the jewellery box, you will have removed a number of these. So you'll have had plenty of practice. That pops into the voice then perfectly. And we come in with our chisel two or three millimeters, that should just pop out. for the other side, about two or three millimeters in. You can see they pop off very easily. And that will give you a lovely clean shoulder uh, piece of work there as well. So just repeat that until we get all the way through. It should be much easier now that we have a nice accurate start. So this should be the last time back in the voice for this piece of the joint. So we just have a tiny little piece of material to remove then in the uh, middle. That should pop out in one or two blows of the chisel here. Now because we're using pine, it's a soft wood, very large pores, 
you get a lot of little deep hits in the center. That's quite okay. Glue will fit in there and uh, actually add to the strength of that joint. If you're using a hardwood, you won't really have that problem. Okay, over to our sides. We just want to remove a little piece at a time. No need for this to go back in the vise. These will pop off just vertically like this. Two or three millimeters again at a time. And then right down to the line. And on the back side, we just have to go to the end line. See how easy that pops out. Now it's a little bit bumpy across the surface. We'll clean that up with a chisel, a little bit of vertical pairing. So grab our chisel like so and wiggle it all the way down. Repeat from the other side. level off the top of your joint nicely. Okay, so one more to do here before we drill our hole for the bird to go in and out. I'm not happy that I saw down far enough there, so just give that a little bit of a saw cut. Just make sure your saw cuts are right down to the line. That will stop your wood from splitting. And just finish that off then from the back. Again, we'll vertical pair across that just to level it off. This is where a really sharp chisel will help you out enormously. Okay, so we just want to get that roughly right. When we go to fit um, our sides onto that we'll have to do a little bit more fitting on them and look at that later on okay so that's what looked complicated looking quite simple now last thing to do is to uh, drill our hole here so i'll go and get a porcelain bit and see you in a moment now you may have a pillar drill in your workshop or if you're starting out you will uh, probably need to get at least a good cordless drill and uh, depending on the type of birds you're trying to attract to the birdhouse the size of the hole is really important so um, this one here is hopefully for robins, blue tits, that type of size so I believe the recommended size is less than 30 millimeters. this is 35 millimeters. so it's the closest I have to it in the workshop at the moment it's just a fastener bit you could also use a hole. You could also use a hole saw as well if you've got one of those. And uh, we'll take our time. We've already drilled the pilot hole in position, as you saw in the uh, marking out video, and that will help guide the center piece here of the forcing bit. Okay, so as you can see, it's already catching in that pilot hole that we drilled. So we take our time. We'll go down about halfway and then come up from uh, the back halfway as well. So we'll just 
just getting all the way through at the moment. piece as it's a uh, very delicate right here in the center. We're also working through a small piece of a knot here as well which makes it very hard work on the uh, artist drill. Clean up the hole with a few passes through of the uh, parsley bit. But that by and large then is our front piece completed. Got a nice clean cut on both sides. Now the back is very similar, so you've got to remove the two large corner pieces. Again, you can hang on to those for a bit of decoration later on. And in the same fashion that we removed the two joints here on the side at the front, you go ahead and remove the two little uh, joints here at the side. So after that, then we're basically on to the last part, which is joining the roof pieces together. Now, there's our front and our back completed. And we have our two sides. And I think instead of moving on to the roof at this stage, it would be worth spending time fitting up these joints, getting them glued together nice and square, and letting them set for a few hours so that they are ready for when we go to assemble all the other pieces. So at this stage, you'll be thankful you numbered all the uh, joints. So here's number one, and you're looking for number one there on side number two so that's supposed to slot in there it shouldn't by right at the moment i mean it'll go in a little bit before so by hand but and um, should be a bit of fitting to do i need to pare down the edges of the joints on the cheeks here as well and then they should go together by hand so i'll just do number one as an example then you can repeat all the way around for uh, two, three, and four. So if I have a look at it, it's a little bit tight, and I'm not quite to the line here on uh, this particular um, cheek. Now, because these are quite weak because you're working with the grain, I'm going to remove timber from uh, the male piece here. So I need to chisel a little bit off this cheek here on number one. This is something you have to do by feel, just by looking at it. You know, they're obviously not fitting, so you're gonna to have to take a little bit off. So we'll get that into our voice and just chisel it down a little bit. Fitting is a very slow process, but it's as important as marking out and doing all the sawing. And uh, great care and time should be taken with it. So we need to just get a nice sharp chisel and just clean off that cheek here on the joint. On the shoulder as well, we can just tidy that up. Take a little bit off the other side as well. Now this won't necessarily fit straight away. I might need to come back and just tidy that up a few times. But we won't be rushing it. Um, each one of these corners 
rotate very slowly. We'll get them fitting by hand. Okay, so that requires a little bit more taking off number one here. If it's a very tight fit, you might have to uh, saw the cheek down here. But ideally, you just want to be taken off a little bit at a time with the chisel. In here, pairing up, pairing away. Can also be done on the flat like this if you prefer. Okay, so we can see now that it's starting to pick up the joint. You don't want to bang that in with a mallet or push it too hard by hand. Little bit by little bit, fit those up. Keep doing that all the way around. We'll come back to you in a few minutes. Now we also want to just make sure that the bottom of the trench is nicely cleaned off and square. That should be it then. So as I said, do not rush here. That one joint took me the guts of 10 minutes. Should be fit nicely now. Okay, you can see it's going together by hand. I wouldn't recommend you tapping him with a mallet, especially with a soft wood timber. Okay, so that's one corner. You can check that with your tri square just to make sure you're getting a nice square fit. That's absolutely perfect. So we've got to repeat that for uh, corner two, three, and four. Then we'll apply a little bit of glue and get that clamped up. Okay, so uh, we've done a lot of chiseling there on the uh, joints, just maybe 40 minutes, 10 minutes each. We then proceed to do what's called a dry fit, where you push it all together by hand. If it's a little bit loose now, it's not a major problem, as you will be putting some glue in as well. It's much more important that they go together without any force, as you could snap the pins off the male parts. Okay, it's quite tidy, it's holding itself very well, and then three and four, and four is plenty loose, and three, and a little bit of, there's a nice pop there from that joint. So that's the, the basic box itself. Now if you've used the face side and face edge correctly all the way, you'll have a nice flat bottom, everything will line up. And we've got our lovely shape to the top. And just check that that's square with your tri square. Okay, that's pretty bang on. Okay, so make sure you have nice uh, 90 degree angles around all sides. So we'll just uh, need a little bit of glue on that because it's uh, pretty, pretty tight. Okay, you don't need mountains of glue because we have some screws coming up from the base which are going to hold it together anyway, plus the roof is going to be screwed on. So if you just take the glue in the kit, break the tab, pop it open. Any little scrap piece of timber then, we can use actually one of the triangular pieces for this. Just mix up a bit of glue. Okay, so the inside of the birdhouse we have no real markings on, so there's no need to sand that up. So we can actually clamp this away and worry about sanding off all our lines even before, even before we get to the end. So a little bit of glue into the bottom of the joint, and a little bit of glue on the cheeks here. People always put on way more glue than they need. Just pop that down. Any excess, just wipe it off with a damp cloth, preferably. Number two, number one then. 
In general, PVA glue sets stronger than the wood itself, so it's not a chance of it breaking. The wood will actually break before the glue. Okay, just wipe off any excess. This is going outdoors, so we don't have to be obsessed about um, staining the wood or anything like that. Number four is not massively tight, so might put an extra bit of glue on that. So we want to coat the bottom of the joint and the two cheeks. Any tiny little gaps you have around, we'll uh, show you how to close those up later on. One, two, four, and number three. Again, you can see the importance of the uh, joints being able to come apart by hand. It um, reduces the risk of the wood actually breaking when you're trying to glue it up, etc. Okay, now we have two choices here. If your joints are good and tight, it should glue up and firm up by itself. But preferably you should get some clamps. Might even fit in your woodwork clamp. And uh, just give it a bit of a helping hand. The clamping up our joints. Just make sure they're square with your tri square as you clamp them up. In many cases, the clamp will actually square off uh, the piece for you. That's one. Get as many as we can on. Again, just check that it's nice and square. That's lovely. Just try and make sure it's as square as possible. Uh, you don't have to be obsessed about it because it's going outdoor and when it's outdoor it's going to move a bit anyway with all the weather etc. Now any glue that's leaked out there when you clamp it, just wipe it off with a damp cloth with your finger. You might try to get an extra clamp or two on there. These quick release clamps really are ideal for quick woodwork. Nice and gentle now here, we don't want to squeeze that too hard in case we can snap the wood. Okay. So, one final check, make sure that's square, which it is. And we we'll let that set. 24 hours is the recommended time for all PVA glues. But you'll find if you have good joints, if you take those clamps even off after four to six hours, um, most of the setting is actually done. We'll put that aside and move on to... Now for our roof we have a couple of um, female parts of the finger joints to remove. A few little chamfers. Same on the male piece, a couple of chamfers and we have two pins to leave in as well. So from making the sides of the birdhouse these should be no problem. Um, we've removed corners like this before and we have removed material from the center of the joint as well. So I'll just go through the cutting out of one corner here and the removal of one of the female fingers here as well and one of the chamfers. And you just repeat that then for all the other pieces. Again, you're going to have to do some fitting as well of the joints once these are done. Again, staying on the X side of the line. If you've got other equipment around the workshop, like coping saws or scroll saws, you could do a round edge on that as well. That, that's really up to yourself. You could also put a little curve in here. Um, there's lots of space on the project wood kits for your own little inputs. Now we'll remove one of these female pins here. So again, three vertical cuts in the vise. Staying on the X side of the line, of course. If 
find you don't have a lot of strength in terms of doing woodwork. You can make more than three cuts in here. Just keep your two outside ones close to the line. So you can see the three cuts there. And we use our chisel over the leg of the table on the bench to remove the rest. So we'll go down about three millimeters. Same from the other side. Now, if you want to speed things up, you could do both joints at the same time. Just doing one here for the demonstration. So back in two or three millimeters from the edge, just tap that down. Pops out nicely. And we keep repeating that. As I always say to my own students, any more than three or four taps of the chisel at that point in the operation, you're really going too fast or trying to rush it, and the results will not be good. If you find you're too strong with your mallet, you can just hold it closer to the head. Or if you need a bit more uh, power, just hold it at the, the base. And the final piece in the middle, we just remove with a tap down from the top. Okay, that's your female pin removed. Repeat that for this one here. On the male one then, we remove our chamfers again, like on the other piece. And I'm just going to show you one of the corners here. So it's a saw cut and the saw cut. X side of the line again. Sawing is always made easier if you keep your wood nice and level in the vise. Okay, so we repeat that for this corner over here and remove the center piece in the same way you remove one of the uh, female fingers. So we'll come back then and fit these up. Okay, so we have our male and female parts done for the roof. Just trying to fit them up now. So we have this joint which is going in quite well. And this one is a little bit tight here on the left. So I might just pair down just the cheek of this one here. Let's see how we go. Okay, we're just removing tiny little bits of material at a time. Okay, so that's pretty much a good job there. Okay, so
So that'll be our roof structure. We just want to check that we've got a 90 degree angle inside in here. Push them together. Now that will go nicely onto our border house. Now in the design of this particular one, I've got a slightly longer side and a slightly shorter side. It's just the design I saw of a bird house on the internet. Um, if you like, you can just measure this up and keep this the same length. That's up to yourself. But this just needs a bit of glue now and maybe a little bit of, little bit of drying overnight and we'll put it together then with the rest of the bird house. So like the sides, just gently pull apart. Take some PVA glue. Put it into the shoulder area here. If you've got any pitting on the bottom of the joint, you can actually fill it up with glue. And a little bit of glue on the cheeks of the joint. Again, not too much glue. Glue is actually very strong. Push that together by hand. You just wipe away any excess. If you've got a damp cloth, it's ideal for that. Okay, so that being good and tight, um, that should glue away. Just make sure again, after you glue, that you check. You can see how that's gone off square. So we need to push those into the tri-square corner like that just to get them. No, uh, at a nice kind of 90 degree angle. Again, if that's a little bit loose, not to worry too much. That will come with practice. This is going to have four screws going down onto the uh, main bird box itself, and that will help hold um, your joints if you are a little bit loose. But that's perfect. We let that dry overnight with the sides. And the final stage then is to fit our base. So we're just going to be putting four screws in there. Possibly a fifth screw as well if the step is a little bit loose, but I think that worked out pretty well. And we've got four screws to put in to the top to hold the uh, roof in place on the sides. So we'll come back to that in a few minutes and then we'll be ready for sanding and putting on our exterior finish. So now we're ready to take the clamps off here and uh, first of all have a look at the roof has glued up nicely that's ready to go on so we'll look at fitting that today and also fitting the base if we just remove the clamps off the bird box itself that will be nice and square this is good and strong not falling apart which is always good now that will need a good sanding so um, I will have separate sanding videos but for now I recommend people to use uh, an orbital hand sander um, like a black and decker mouse or one of those orbital sanders and um, you can sand it by hand if you like, if you've got light pencil marks, that's fine. Uh, this one has a lot of pen marks with the mark in the video, so this will have to go to um, a belt sander that I have in my workshop. Okay, so that will be the main box. You can see now that the roof will fit on nicely here. It's a nice fit. We have the base, which will go on here. Get that fit up in a moment. You may find after making your joints there's a little bit of material sticking out on the base here. You can leave that on or um, mark it out and cut it off. That's up to yourself. And we've also got the, um, the piece for the step that might need a little bit of fitting up. Just clicking in there nicely. 
Okay, so we're going to mark out the pilot holes for the screws to attach the base on the roof and then I'll take it apart and get it all sanded up and then we'll come back and show you how to varnish it up. And there's many different finishes you can put on it, oil, varnish, paint, it's up to yourself really. Okay, so fitting the roof, we want to just put the bird box sitting on its back. And we will pick the side from the front. Just let them sit together like that. And with a pen then, or your pencil, we'll mark out the full length of the edge here. So you've got two lines on the inside of the roof like that. Okay. We'll then go inside the bird box and mark couple of lines to mark the thickness of the timber. So you'll end up with two double lines 18 millimeters apart. And basically we want our screw to be in uh, the center of the larger rectangle here. So we'll get a ruler, just complete those rectangles. If you have a baby tri-square here it will also do fine. Try square to mark the width. So the center of this triangle, oh sorry, rectangle, and this rectangle will be the center of the pilot hole. So we draw an X from one corner to the other. Best we can, a little, little bit off there, but it's not a big deal. That'll be the center of one pilot hole. And we'll get the center of this one here. If you've got a steel rule like this, um, they're ideal, apart from the fact that the measurements start at zero, which is excellent. One end is round, which is very useful when you go to uh, draw lines and corners, etc. So we have two pilot holes, one here and one here. Now we need to do the same for the back. So we'll go inside and just mark the thickness of the wood. And we can mark very, very outside of the bird box down here. You could also use the same markings from the front. And put our X then in those uh, rectangles again. Pile it all there. And the pile it all on this one. Again, your pilot holes are essential. You don't want to crack your wood putting the screw in. So that's the position for the four holes for attaching the roof on. So just get a two millimeter drill bit. Over the edge of the desk is fine. And we'll drill straight down through those markings. Never apply too much pressure with the two millimeter bits. They have a tendency to snap pretty easily. Okay, so that gives us four pilot holes now on the outside, and we'll use those to screw that on as best we can. Okay, so that will give a nice effect there. 
So that's ready for sanding. Now you can also take one of the triangular pieces from the roof earlier and that will be glued on. You can either glue it on to the, uh, the roof section so it looks like that or you can screw on the top and then simply screw or glue that onto the face of the bird box. Provides a bit of shelter on the door for the birds um, and a bit more coverage from birds of prey looking down. So we'll be using that. Now fit the base, quite similar. It's nice to have the base removable because um, you can clean out the birdhouse every year if you need to. Okay, so we'll just line up the timber where we want it. We'll draw on the inside of the box. Looking to make a square shape here. So we'll need four screws here, so we need to find centre points here, so we'll use the rectangle method again. Try to square that. Try to square this one. Now we've been very accurate with our screw placement, I mean, you could judge it by eye if you're doing woodwork for a while. But this will just make everything um, nice and neat looking. There's also a case to be made for when your screws are placed centrally and evenly, it does actually help in the uh, stopping warping and distortions when the whole thing is put together, especially on outdoor projects like this. It's a very important that it's structurally very sound. So there's our four X's again, and we'll drill our pilot holes for those. It's always useful to have a few of these pilot hole bits around. You never know when they're going to break. Or wear out. Okay, so that's pretty much everything. You can just try fit the step, make sure it fits. So that goes on there nicely. Your base then will be screwed onto that after we sand it up. Okay. And as I said earlier, you could also leave this step out and just put a dowel in here. I'll include a dowel in the kit. It's just drill a nine millimeter hole and put your little dowel peg in. Then we'll screw on our roof and attach one of the uh, triangle pieces just for a bit of decoration. Lots of other ways you could put those triangles, you can put them on the side, etc. So um, I'll take this to the workshop and get it sanded up on the belt sander and then I'll give it a hand sand with an orbital sander. I won't be showing that in this particular video but I will come back and show you how to varnish it up and discuss a couple of options. Okay so um, I sanded all the, the individual pieces and gave the edges a nice smooth finish. Just got a, an orbital sander just fixing all the surfaces and I used the belt sander just to round off the top. You don't have to round off the top. Um, it just looks good. And if you've used two different types of timbers, if you've joined us through Patreon, you'll get a beautiful effect there. Okay, so first up, I need to get the base onto the main frame itself. It's nicely cleaned up, all the joints nicely finished. So we'll slot that into the vise. Put, put our base on top of that. You could also at this stage take the uh, front door step and slot that into place. 
we can put a screw down through uh, the base here and through that step to hold it in place. So it fits nicely there. Four screws. These are four by forty mil. And we'll get those in position. Take your time, make sure everything is lined up. We can cut our screws in nice and slowly. Just run your uh, thumb over it to make sure they're nice and flush. This one back out and back in again. Okay, so that's our base and the step installed. Nice and strong. Now we take our roof and we've got the back edge here. We want to keep the um, back edge nice and flush that's going to go up against the wall you're going to need that nice and flush I suppose you could have it out a little bit if you're going to um, hang it from a tree or whatever but you would have had to adjust your uh, pilot holes for that at an earlier stage so we'll just get four screws they're slightly longer 4 by 50s Put them in nice and gently. You could probably get away with two screws, either on the back or the front here, if you've made it well. But we want this thing to hold together in all sorts of weather, so. Overkill is no harm. So you're probably looking at hanging this from some chain off a tree, or you could take the roof off and put a screw into the back into a wooden fence or into a wall, etc. 
you could build um, kind of a stand for it if you wanted to stand in the garden. So there's many options for actually um, fitting it up outside in the garden. Okay, so that's good and sturdy. A little bit of space on the underside. Let the air go through, keeps the uh, nest fresh and also keeps the wood nice and dry. Now finally, we have one of those triangular pieces left over from when we made the uh, front and the back. We want to glue that into place just under the front of the birdhouse. It's just for decoration and maybe a little bit more shelter for the birds and um, egressing the uh, birdhouse. We'll take a little bit of glue. Put it on the back. It's the same PVA glue in the kits. Just spread that out. Now, little trick. I'm going to put that in place and just rub it up and down gently. Get rid of the air. Create a little vacuum and uh, that will allow that to stick by itself without any screw so you're not going to ruin the look of it or anything so we'll let that set overnight i'll just give that an extra little bit of a rope there just wipe away any excess glue with a damp cloth if you have it um, just take a look at it <clears throat> see how everything went together i've got a little gap here on the base so I'm thinking that that's coming from perhaps the step not fitting properly into its joint. So we will take off that base and just make sure that's fitted in properly, re-screw it back down. And then it's ready for the varnishing process. So we'll use a 38mm brush, even 25mm brush, and we'll make sure it's clear of all sawdust and sand. Uh, sanding debris, sanding leftovers, and we'll get that nice coat of yacht varnish ready for outside. Okay, so finishing touch. Uh, this has gone out in the garden, so we're going to need uh, a yacht varnish, a good strong uh, varnish for outside really durable, resist peeling and flaking and added ultraviolet protection which will protect the wood um, on the old sunny days we get. So I particularly like this varnish, it's um, almost like a treacle kind of colour, dries clear, there's a lovely finish on the wood. So it depends how, uh, how much you want to varnish it, just make sure it's well sanded, you give it one coat, sand it then re-varnish it, uh, but I found in the past that one coat of yacht varnish um, is more than enough. Um, it can even last three, four years outdoor, no bother. So um, the most I can sand of this is probably all the um, outsides and the roof. We'll leave the bottom then till tomorrow. So just make sure that you don't let anything drip over the ends. It always work from the middle out really brings out the uh, grain on the wood and just do this side maybe in the back and you can have a look at it so we'll walk from the center up make sure you're not uh, finishing off splashing towards your eyes okay, and we're going to get a lovely effect here now on the top with the end grain Round it off on the uh, sander. So you can really, f uh, really see there, you get a beautiful shine off that and a nice effect on the end grain. With end grain on softwood, um, you often need to dab it into the end grain. A little bit of blotching here where some glue. Um, I didn't wipe it off properly. Just watch out for that. Use a wet cloth. So there you can see one varnish side 
versus varnish side, how much of a lovely shine you get off it. Always working from the middle out. This helps prevent any kind of dripping at the ends. So this is a very satisfying part of the project. You know you've all the work done, joints are good, looks like what it's supposed to look like. Um, I might just mention end grain here again. If you're doing end grain, you'll need to dab the varnish in.